An image pipeline or video pipeline is a set of components commonly used between an image source like a camera and an image renderer like a TV, phone screen and so on. My name is Rico Richardson and in this video I'm going to tell you all about the pixel pipeline. Digital image processing is the use of a digital computer to process digital images through an algorithm. This is typically done through a pipeline. The image pipeline or video pipeline is made up out of components which typically includes image sensor corrections, including debaying or let's say applying a biofilter. It also includes things like noise reduction, image scaling, gamma correction, image enhancement, color space conversion between formats such as RGB, YUV or YCBCR, chroma subsampling, frame rate conversion, image compression, video compression like a JPEG and computer data storage and data transmission. The goal of this pipeline is to create perceptually pleasing results, which means we are creating results we can visibly see. Photoshop or GIMP has layers that it works with. Every time you add a layer, it will be applied to the underlying image. With the use of layer masks, you can make sure certain parts of the image are or aren't being affected. In Darktable, the concept of a processing module is that of a layer. The adjustments follow on the adjustments you've made before. And to target specific areas, you can use masks within the modules. So the idea is the same, but the execution is different. Let's look at this overview from the Darktable manual. Step 1 is where the image receive module input from the last executed module and perform an operation on it to produce the processed output. This operation is different for every processing module. Step 2 combines the module input and processed output using a blending operator to produce the blended output. If no blending is performed, the output of this step is the same as the processed output. At step 3, you generate a mask which defines an opacity for each pixel in the image. The opacity is later used to control how strongly the module's operation is applied to each part of the image. The image with step 3 is a bit strange to me because usually the yellow part is being affected and the black part isn't, depending on whether or not you've inverted your mask. However, if we look at step 4, it seems like the black parts have been affected due to the stronger colors. Step 4 combines the module input and blended output pixel by pixel using the mask as a mixing operator to produce the final output. Where the mask opacity is 100%, the final output is the blended output for that pixel. Where the mask opacity is 0, the final output is the module input for that pixel. An intermediate opacity combines the blended output and module input proportionally. The final output is passed to the next module for further processing. Keep in mind that step 2 and 3 can't be used for all modules. Some modules need to be applied to the entire raw file, but for most modules you can use a mask and define it any way you like. The ordered sequences of processing modules operating on an input file to generate an output image is known as the pixel pipe. The order of the pixel pipe is represented graphically by the order in which modules are presented in the user interface. The pixel pipe starts with a raw image at the bottom of the module list and applies the processing modules one by one, piling up layer upon layer of processing from the bottom up until it reaches the top of the list, where it outputs the fully processed image. The order in which modules are executed within the pixel pipe has been carefully chosen to give the best output quality. In previous versions of Darktable, it was not possible to change the module order. However, there are a number of very specific use cases where the movement of some modules within the pipeline is advised. One of the main reasons to change the module order came about with Darktable version 3.0, which introduced a new scene referred way of working. Version 3.2 formalized this by introducing the display referred and scene referred workflows. I've made a dedicated video on the scene referred versus display referred workflow. I'll be sure to link it at the end of this video and in the description down below so you can learn more about that topic. The manual states that changing the module order shouldn't be done for a number of reasons. These reasons are the changes to the module order often worsen the quality output of an image. Some changes wouldn't make sense like highlight construction should be done before the demosaic, which itself needs to be performed before any input color profile can be applied. For this reason, it is still not possible to move some of the modules that are placed early in the pipeline. Most processing modules are designed to work within a specific color space. Full flexibility would require modules to support different parallel algorithms depending on the color space they are working in, which would drastically increase complexity. 